not even close. Seattle, Portland is the rivalry. It's the rivalry in this country. It's the rivalry in North America. It's a big rivalry. It's getting bigger and better. It's been around for 40 years. Get to our level, we can drive it further. We're the example. It was reading the sports page in the Oregon Journal at the time, since absorbed by the Oregonian. We got a franchise. There is a new team coming to town. Timbers were playing the Seattle Sounders. It was a new sport, we're gonna check it out. Seattle's up the street. Uh, we'll go see what it's all about and support the boys. That happened on May 2nd of 1975. That first game, I remember the weather, I remember the players, I remember that feeling that I had about the skill that I was seeing. The very first Timbers game was pouring rain, and I think that probably made a pretty big dent in the potential for a big crowd. It was an unfortunate defeat at the hands of the Seattle Sounders, 1-0. Uh, uh, it was a penalty for Seattle. Portland actually had a penalty as well that was saved. Barry Powell took it afterwards, said he thought the goalkeeper had gone off his line too soon, but the ref didn't call it. Being a new sport, there's no rivalry from the sport to call on that night. It, it, it was just the first game. It almost could have been anybody. It's, it's great for sort of the narrative of the sweep of history that the very first NASL game was against Seattle. Yeah, I know we lost that first one, 1-0. One other than that, I don't remember a whole lot about that game other than how impressed I was and I was hooked. I love all the stuff that goes back to the 1970 era of the North American Soccer League. So I have jackets and jerseys. It's the ultras on one side, and on this side, it's your magic is real. And that was a TIFO display that we prepared, and again, it goes into rivalry stuff. In 1975, again, being the first year we were in existence, and PTFC is our call. Location of Seattle being close by, there's a natural rivalry in that regard. People want to go and, and support the team because it, you know, they do it anyway, but they really want to do it at Seattle because it means that much more. Look at that. That's bus. That's a bus flag. <laughs> Contrary to popular opinion, I think we behave ourselves when we're up there. This aspect of away games has a lot of a social piece to it. I think you have to have rivalry in sports. That's part of it. Seattle being in a year before us, they got the head start. And now we come in a year after, we're already behind. So it's gonna be harder for us to catch up. And that plays true to the USL, it played true to MLS. We have to put more into it to catch them. You are from Seattle! You get to support a club with a history! You get to support a club that wants you! Show them the kind of respect they deserve! The second game between the two teams, which was the July 26th game, you know, by that point, the Timbers had gone on a big winning streak. They, they'd really sort of captured the attention of the city. The Timbers general manager, Don Paul, who was kind of a character, he, he had said in, in the newspaper, we're really going to show Seattle who's Soccer City USA. And this is Portland's name. It doesn't belong to any other city. San Jose, you can think you are. Seattle, you can think you are. Minneapolis, you can think you are in a few years. This is Soccer City USA. They sold out the stadium for the first time, and then the Timbers won two to one. Portland, in that first year, the team started to do the lap of honor, and they would do that win or lose. That first year was more wins than losses, of course. Well, that tradition began on July 26, 1975, in sort of a 
just sort of exuberant fashion. You know, guys from the bench ran on the field to celebrate with the guys on the field. And it was just sort of a spontaneous lap of honor. It sort of set the, the, the stage and the standard for, you know, this, this um, relationship between the players and the fans. Because of that effort that the players made towards the fans, you feel connected to that team. You feel like you have an impact on the game. And really ever since then, it's been a, a tradition that's passed down. The fans expect it, and the, the veteran players kind of bring the new guys in and say, here's what you do. Here's how you treat the fans who come out. Defense! We're ready. Time to go. We're rolling. Let us in, you asshole! Let us into your shitty stadium! did play again after that. Unfortunately, it was a loss for the Timbers. Um, it was a 3-2 to two loss in overtime uh, up in Seattle. I wasn't at the away game. I was listening to it on radio. Both Seattle and Portland were in that playoff race. It was just very physical, very intense. Uh, there were like five yellow cards issued in the first half. Playoffs always add intensity to any sport. Barry Powell scored in the 90th minute to, to tie it, to put it into overtime, which was exciting, but Seattle ended up winning. Sports Illustrated actually covered the game. It got a two-page spread and a couple of color photos. That's where I remember the first villain I probably had for the Sounders was their central defender, Mike England. I chose not to like him that first year, and when I think of that first year for Seattle, that's the one player's name I definitely will remember, and I didn't like him. <laughs> Having guys that you can hate as much as you can have guys on your own team that you love there's nothing better for rivalry. When you have MLS allocation rules that say that Portland is first in the allocation order for the US men's national team player, and Dempsey becomes available, and he ends up in Seattle, and Portland gets no compensation for it, that stokes the fire too. We're the underdog. They get the favorable treatment. They got the player. And if someone wants to say, well, that's where Dempsey wanted to go so that MLS worked out a deal, well, that even stokes it even more, because now, Dempsey, you don't want to be in Portland, so we're going to take it to you then. Two teams played again. It was the quarterfinals, Western Conference semifinals. It was the most intense sporting event I had ever been to. My memory says there was 28,000 people here, but on a DVD that is out there about the game, the announcers are saying 31,000. So somewhere between 28 and 31,000 people in this stadium, nothing was like the crowd that night. Can you believe the excitement here with a crowd of 30,000 plus expected for this game between the Sounders and the Timbers tonight, isn't it something? I'm trying awfully hard to believe it, Bruce. Uh, some of these people have been here all day, of course, waiting yep. to get in. And <laughs> we were. In the stands, uh, we got tickets that morning. 
we waited in line starting, I got down there at 4 a.m., got in line, there was about 200 people in front of me, single file to the booth. Today the game just underway here in Portland, and you can't believe the crowd, a beautiful, beautiful evening. People have been in line all afternoon waiting for about 3,000 tickets that went on sale at 6 o'clock this evening. Within about 10 feet of the booth, we were told that the tickets were nearly sold out. And so we were afraid we wouldn't even get tickets after being there 4 in the morning. Thankfully, we got tickets, but we ended up in the upper level of 203 or 204. Graham Day's in there, Peter with Willie Anderson. Watch what happens. There's the kick. Seattle took a first half lead to go up 1 0. Uh, things were looking kind of tough for the Timbers. They got a second half goal off a deflection, very Powell goal. That put the game in overtime. And then Timbers ended up getting a, uh, a headed goal in overtime from Tony Bett. And the place went bananas. Stormed the field, you know, lifted Tony Betts up onto their shoulders, carried him off. And it was so loud. Definite thing I remember with me and my brother, he's standing next to me, and I'm shouting into his ear with my mouth touching his earlobe. He's doing the same to me, and we still can't hear each other. I mean, it's even to this day, it's one of the most famous games that's ever been played uh, by any Timbers team. <laughs> Rivalry. I think it's healthy for the sport. My opinion of where MLS turning point came was when Portland and Vancouver came into the league because we showed the passion to the viewers on TV. Yeah, with three points for a fucking group on you, puss. A Portland match is something people want to see. If you want to drive TV ratings, don't have it in a quiet stadium talking to you, Dallas. There have been back and forth, even just in the five years in MLS. Come back anytime, anytime. And there's always a chance to win and always a chance to come out and say, yeah, we've got you until the next time. We're here to support the team that are connected to us, that connection they made in 75. We still have that connection. They still do the lap of honor. They still acknowledge us, we acknowledge them. We're here for them. We're also here for the community. We are proud of Portland, we're proud of where we live, we're proud of Oregon. We want people to know that. Always support the Portland Timbers, no other. Thank <laughs> you.